Welcome back to Brighter Morning with Bo. I am Bo Tiwari, your host on MCTV, Multicultural TV, beaming in Trinidad and Tobago and the entire Caribbean region. My first guest is Mr. Weston Mirage, and we welcome him now to the show. Good morning. How are you? Good morning to you, Dr. Tiwari, and to all of your viewers. Yes, no, thank you for being with us this morning. I, I, I want to get it's my right pleasure in. to be with you this morning. Sure. I want to get right into it. Uh, why did you choose accounting? How did you arrive at your decision? And are you happy with your choice? Yeah, so um, I always had a passion for business studies, actually. Um, it really piqued my interest in secondary school. Um, and in particular, accounting, accounting piqued my interest. Um, and the reason that it was so fascinating to me, the field of accounting, is because accounting is more than just numbers on a financial statement. You know, those numbers represent the people of the organization. It represents the employees. And, you know, the numbers that I am looking at and I am, uh, that I am engaged in actually affects the employees of the organization. So I think that accounting allows me in some ways to make a difference to these employees because based on the recommendations that I make as an accountant, um, it directly affects them. Um, so I am extremely happy that I chose accounting as my career. Um, and I think that it opens up a lot of opportunities for me, not just here in Trinidad and Tobago, but across the world. The, um, you say you're interested in business, you know, there are, there are different perspectives on business, you know, for, for instance, the, the, um, the very, very often quoted um, Milton Friedman, the economist uh, from the University of Chicago, is is um, reported to have said, and I have seen the quote, the purpose of a business is to make a profit, right? So he yeah. is taking that view. And then there is another economist from the same school, University of Chicago uh, Economics Department, who has said that um, that basically the Yes, the purpose of a business is to make a profit, but there must be a sense of corporate social responsibility. I can't at the yes. moment uh, remember his name because I didn't plan to, to ask you this. And then there is a British, um, uh, he's not an economist, uh, um, but he used to teach at the London School of um, the London University, University of London Business School. His name was Charles Handy, and he r wrote a lot of books. He started his career in Shell, the corporation, and eventually went to academia. And he said that the, the way you look at a business is not only uh, in terms of profit, which is important, not only in terms of uh, corporate social responsibility, which is important, but you have to look at a business in the context of its stakeholders. So you have to take yes. the stockholders into account, the shareholders, yes. You have to take the directors into account, yes but you also have to take the employees into account. And he said, Charles Handy, that you also have to take the fact that uh, any corporate entity operates in a community, that is to say the community in which it resides, and it operates in a country, and that you have to take all of those things into account. Does your approach to accounting allow you to take these kind of broad perspectives, these contending views into account? 
Yes, and that is absolutely true. You know, there's different schools of thought in terms of um, the purpose of a business, right? And Milton Friedman would have had the old school of thought, in my opinion, yeah. which would be that the purpose of a business is to make profits. And that's the sole purpose. That's the only purpose yeah. of the business. Well, but as you mentioned... Let, let, um, let, just a minute. Let me be fair to Milton Friedman. Uh, what yeah. he said is that the, the, the purpose, he didn't say the, the sole purpose of a business is to make a profit, but that the first purpose of a business is to make a profit. He said you could do ev anything yes. after that, but you have to make a profit first. So I just wanted to clarify yes. that. Go ahead. Yeah, just to clarify that, yes. Um, but really and truly, well, as you're saying, the first thing is to make a profit, right? Um, but there are other schools of thought that came after which says that we need to take stakeholders into account. Um, and I think that my view of accounting is similar to that. You know, um, a lot of times people think that accountants are uh, very strict based. You know, we look at uh, revenue and costs and it's profits that we're looking at, right? But I think that um, that is a traditional view of accounting. Um, I think that accountants are looking more now so to how their numbers affect people within the organization. Um, what are the external factors that are affecting their numbers? You know, um, so I think that in line with um, the new schools of thought that are coming out um, or that have recently been developing, um, in terms of looking at corporate social responsibility, at looking at um, all of the different stakeholders uh, that the business incorporates that relates to the business besides making a profit. Um, I think that the, my view of accounting is in line with that, that um, we need to look not just at the profits, but how it affects um, other stakeholders as well. Case in point, um, you know, we could say uh, that we want to reduce this certain cost of labor. Let's say, for example, labor. We want to reduce the cost of labor in the company. But in order to reduce labor, the decision might be to um, lay off certain workers. And what does that say to the rest of employees of the company? You know, if we're deciding that the, the cost that we're going to cut is labor but that has a ripple effect on the other employees who are going to see that who are not laying off and it's going to affect their level of productivity their level of motivation their level of satisfaction with the job so it all comes full circle you know i don't think that we need to keep it in a box accounting when we're looking at our numbers i don't think it's just about the profits i think it's about all of the different stakeholders as well. We need to look at everything overall. Very good. Um, I, 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 liked your I like your enlightened approach, your broad perspective. Tell me a little bit about UWI. Um, what has been good about your educational experience at UWI in St. Augustine? And what has been problematic? So I think um, the good definitely outweighs the problematic. I'll start with that. Um, but in terms of the good experiences at the University of the West Indies, I would say, first of all, the camaraderie of the student body. You know, I would have seen it firsthand both in a physical school because I would have been part of the graduating class that had physical school as well as the virtual online setting. And you know, that student camaraderie of students supporting each other, of students helping out each other, that was definitely one of the best experiences that I had at, uh, at UE. You know, the togetherness, the sense of community, um, you know, that was something that was not just present in physical school, but also moved along with us when we went online. You know, I made new friends in UE um, who, you know, supported me and helped me through um, online as well, you know. So I think that that first of all was one of my, one of the best experiences that I had at UE. Um, secondly, I would say the lecturers, how knowledgeable they are 
and how um, exceptionally well they delivered our courses to us. You know, that was something that I don't think I would have gotten anywhere else at any other university. Well, that's just a biased opinion, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, the sense of Caribbean pride, you know, that's something else that I really enjoyed about UE. Um, and I think one of the better things uh, about my experience at UE was also learning um, life skills and tools. Um, so it's not just the academic side. Going to university is not just about getting a degree, getting a paper saying that you have a degree. It's also about learning those life skills that you would take with you through the rest of your life. So I think all of those things are the good experiences that I gained at UE. In terms of the problematic, um, you know, I think that university requires a lot of sacrifices that as young people, we don't really want to make, you know, we, um, there's a lot of things that we want to do at our age that we aren't able to do if we're studying and we have these long hours. But I mean, those things are necessary for you to be successful, you know. Um, I would say one of the more problematic, in my opinion, experiences at UWE was moving to that online setting. So while it did have its advantages, there were many challenges to that. Um, you know, we moved away from learning in a way that uh, we were accustomed to. And I think I mentioned that in my valedictorian address, you know, we moved away from the academic norms that we were accustomed to. Um, we had to change the way we learn, uh, the way we study, you know, the way we interact with our peers. So I think that that definitely was a problematic or I wouldn't say problematic, but a challenging experience. And I think that majority of the graduating class, this year's graduating class, would have experienced that as well. All right, interesting. So um, I, I want to ask you a question based on what you just said there. I mean, you are a young person looking at the world. You have gone through this transition in which the acceleration to uh, digital learning um, intensified you know and you've had that experience you've had to shift you've had to sh change gears you've had to make adaptations in order to do well and you've come out at, at the top you've done very very well you became the valedictorian etc you spoke well um what kind of do you think that we are entering i'm asking this as a young person now uh, not as an expert, do you think we are headed for an era in which the technological changes that are coming at us almost seemingly at the speed of light uh, is going to make adaptation, uh, uh, it has always been a fundamental requirement, but adaptation as of, at a fast pace has now become, you might say, the norm for human beings to survive and to succeed. You think we are in that kind of modern era? I do. I, I think that we are in that, um, that, that era. You know, I think um, in order to, to keep up with the times, as you're saying, in order to keep up with the technological change, constantly be adapting. Um, and we saw it with the students um, of this graduating class, right? Um, as soon as the pandemic hit, you know, schools were closed and we, we just, quickly transitioned to online learning. We, um, it was no longer a physical classroom, it was digital learning, you know, and um, that was something that we didn't have time to adapt to. We didn't have, um, you know, okay, this is gonna happen uh, a few months down the road, so you all could prepare for it. It's something that was just thrown at us and we were, I would say, forced to adapt because we didn't have any other alternatives, right? So I think that um, the era that we're living in is that technology is coming at us at a fast pace. And I think that in order for us to survive, in order for us to um, keep up with the times, we really need to constantly keep adapting. 
with the technological innovations that we're seeing uh, happening rapidly. All right. Um, are you, I'm, go I'm going to break shortly now, but just answer this question quickly. Are you employed now? And how did you, uh, explain a little bit how you ended up where you are. So, yeah, I'm currently employed with Ernst & Young Services Limited, uh, which is a global accountancy firm. Um, so I always had an interest in auditing. Uh, so I'm employed in the audit department at Ernst & Young. I always had an interest in auditing, um, which looks at, you know, using the standards, the auditing standards that we have um, to basically take a look at the financial statements and the records, yeah. the accounting records of a company and, um, you know, make an opinion on that so that uh, shareholders can know whether to invest, um, et cetera, right? So that's just a, a general <laughs> definition of what auditing is for those that don't know. Um, but auditing is something that really interests me because I make a difference through auditing. Um, as I said earlier on accounting, you can make a difference. You can make a difference with auditing as well, based on your audit's opinion. Um, so it's something that really interested me. And well, Vincent Young really piqued my interest as well, um, because their mission stood out to me, which was to build a better working world. You know, when I was looking at different um, accounting firms to apply to, that one really stood out to me. Um, based on its mission statement, um, because it's not just about, you know, auditing or doing our tax services, but to build a better working world for everyone. Um, so that's that's how I got into auditing. And um, yeah, that's where I'm currently at. All right, now I'm going to ask you a question now, but we're going to break, so think about it. Uh, when you think of the future, what kind of time horizon is in your mind? And how or where do you see yourself within that time horizon? Okay, so we break now for commercials. This is Brighter Morning with Bo. I am Bo Tiwari. We are talking to Mr. Western Mirage, a young graduate from the University of the West Indies and valedictorian for his faculty uh, this year. And he is now at Ernst and Young Services. Uh, we, we'll see you when we come back after the commercials. Brighter morning with Bo. Welcome to Lifetime Solutions, where you can trust your roof to us. Our services include custom fabrication, steel framing, roofing installation, on-site roll forming, roofing maintenance and services. Call 223-ROOF or 223-7663 for a quote today or visit our website www.lifetimesolutionstt.com Lifetime Solutions You can trust your roof to us Call 223-ROOF or 223-7663 for a quote today or visit our website www.lifetimesolutionstt.com Welcome to Lifetime Solutions, where you can trust. Yes, brighter morning with Bo, and we are talking with young Western Mirage, uh, recently hired by Ernst & Young, a graduate of the University of the West Indies, and valedictorian for his faculty and class. Um, Western, you remember the question I asked you, which is that, when you think of the future, how long a time horizon are you thinking about and where do you see yourself in that? So um, the next step for me would be, well, 
short term uh, would be to complete the ACC certification, which is the Association of Chartered and Certified Accountants. Yes. Um, that is a professional designation for accountants. Um, so that's short term, right? I want to complete that. Um, and that will open up a lot of opportunities for me to, you know, take accounting, not just here, but worldwide. Um, uh, in the future, I would like to be the owner of my own business. You know, that is something that um, I am really interested in, in doing at some point. I always, as I said, enjoy business studies. Um, and, you know, a lot of people think that accounting would just be the numbers, right? But at UWE, we actually, um, part of the degree program, the accounting degree program uh, was business courses as well as economics courses. So um, I think those would aid me really well in starting up my business someday. Um, and at some point, I would also like to become a teacher of some sort. You know, I always, um, I am always interested by the teaching profession. Um, from since I was small, um, I always wanted to be a teacher, um, which is something that I kind of dabbled in already, uh, where I used to give um, lessons to students, uh, tutoring services. Um, but I would like to take that further uh, from the small tutoring services that I used to, to give um, to a grander scale then. But I want to become a teacher of some sort. You know, I think that it is one of the noblest jobs that someone could have, um, you know, returning the knowledge that you have gained over the years um, to a younger generation. So those are some of the things that I see myself doing in the future. Um, it's all moving parts. It's all over the place. I know that, um, you know, it's different things. It's teaching, it's starting my own business. But I think that um, once you're passionate about something, you go for it. Um, you don't limit yourself. You don't put yourself in a box, you know. What? Well, I agree with you on the teaching. Every, um, every profession I've had, whatever it is, I, I think teaching and learning have been critical components of it for me. And that is what gives it a certain amount of satisfaction. Um, what, what are the personal uh, or cultural traits uh, that you carry that have helped you to excel, you think? Um, personally, I think that, well, I don't know if you label this as a cultural trait, but you know, the support of family and friends, I think that is what would have helped me to be successful, first of all. You know, with all the support of certain persons, I would not be sitting here speaking to you this morning. Um, you know, so I think that that continuous support over the years uh, really has helped me to be successful. But apart from that, the personal traits I would say would be, first of all, discipline. You know, that's one of our watchwords, discipline. And I think that it is important for somebody to stay focused and to stay focused on their goals. You know, I think that when you're focused on achieving your goals, you really are able to be successful. Um, I think that persistence is important, you know, always working hard and um, never giving up, no matter how many times you fail. Um, I am not afraid to say it, that I, there were times at university that I did feel, you know, not uh, courses overall, but there were components of courses that I would have failed. Um, and I always say that, that no matter how many times you fail, it's getting back up you know, and um, really striving to do your best. I think that some other personal traits would be respect, you know, being humble and um, curiosity. You know, I always look for answers to things. I don't just leave it, let it be. If it is that I don't understand something, I always go and try to see and, and be curious, you know. And I think um, last but not least would be courage. Um, I think that you need to seize every opportunity that comes in front of you and don't back down from any challenge. So those are some of the traits that I think that I have that allow me to be successful um, at university. All right. I, I, we've come to the end of time and I'll ask you one last question uh, and you can talk about it as we close. What is right about Trinidad and Tobago? 
what is wrong about Trinidad and Tobago and what can we do to put everything right? It's a really heavy question, <laughs> but um, I think that some of the things that are right about Trinidad and Tobago is that we are a resilient people. Uh, I think that we rise to the occasion, we overcome every hurdle that is in our way. You know, I think that um, we are strong people, you know, and, and that is important for a country. I think that um, it's we something that's good about Trinidad and Tobago is the cultures coming together. You know, we are a multicultural society. No matter the divides that, you know, we see from time to time, we are a country that really comes together um, and in, in the worst of times and in the best of times, you know. I think that Trinidad and Tobago has a lot of opportunities for persons to grow and develop. A lot of times people say, you know, I can't make it here. I need to go somewhere else. And that's the whole issue of brain drain in, 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 in the Caribbean region as a whole, you know. But I think that, um, that Trinidad and Tobago gives us many opportunities from something as simple as having free education from primary straight up to tertiary education. You know, that's something that, you know, countries like the United States have not been able to figure out. Um, I think that we are a creative and innovative people. You know, um, we, 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 we are very innovative. Um, I think that some of the things that are bad, <laughs> and I don't, I don't particularly see them as being bad. I think that is challenges that we're trying to overcome. Um, Trinidad and Tobago tends to be in some instances um, reactive rather than proactive to issues. You know, we see it year after year with issues such as flooding, you know, that's something that I don't understand how come we don't um, seek to get solutions beforehand rather than um, after the fact, you know? And it happens over and over, but we don't seem to be putting things into place to stop some of these issues, right? Um, and I think that one of the biggest issues that we have, that we have to overcome is that we tend to work separately towards our own agendas rather than working together towards a common purpose. And the day that we put our differences aside, you know, yes, we come together at times, but as of recently, I think that we're so divisive and we're so in our own lanes um, that, you know, that hampers progress. And I think that once it is we come together, we would be able to uh, come together towards a shared purpose, we would be able to achieve greater things as a country. All right, so you, you, you think that sense of purpose is critical, right? Collective, I do. Pur I think collective I do. purpose rather than individual goals or ambition. I want to thank you yes. very, very much, uh, Mr. Maraj, Western Maraj. I want to wish you well in all the things that you are doing and I want to wish you success in life and in work. Um, I want to thank you for sharing your thoughts with us and giving us your perspective. And uh, well, we, we will talk to you maybe another time to find out how the progress has been for you. All right, this is Brighter Morning. Thank you morning. so much for having me this morning. You are welcome. This is Brighter Morning with Bo. I am Bo Tiwari. Uh, we're signing off now for the news with Andrew Chan. I will see you after the news. Stay with us. When we come back, we talk to Dr. Vijay Narayan Singh.